I have with me Robert Pantello. He is an attorney, civil rights activist, radio personality, writer, and a member of the Rainbow Push Coalition, Jesse Jackson's organization. And I want to talk to Robert about some of the stuff going on today and and, uh, his impression of the president and a lot of good stuff. Robert, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Jesse, for having me. Yes, sir. Uh, how was your weekend, by the way? I cannot complain at all. 70 degrees over here. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like 80 in Los Angeles today, I believe. Um, first, I want to know, are you still working with Jesse Jackson's organization, Rainbow Push? I still volunteer for uh, Wolfie from time to time. I uh, interned there in college, worked with Janice Mathis on the citizenship education program uh, in Atlanta. Wonderful organization, still doing great work in the community. You, uh, What's your impression of the uh, Jesse Smollett situation? Now they have closed this case. They let him out, out close the case, and people are upset about that. What's your imp- what do you think about that? Well, I think the issue is people don't understand criminal courts and criminal law. Well, Jesse Smollett, um, uh, his final resolution was just a diversion program. And most, a lot of people get diversion programs for nonviolent felonies. Um, basically, he did community service, paid a fine in exchange for the prosecution, uh, agreeing not to prosecute the case. The prosecution never had enough evidence, um, tangible, sustainable, uh, documentary evidence to uh, obtain a conviction. And therefore, they found a compromise that helped both parties out where the state didn't have to prosecute a case they couldn't win. Jesse Smollett was able to conclude the case without having to go to trial with the risk of um, being convicted. So I think it was probably the proper outcome. Do you think that had it been a white man accusing uh, black people in that manner, this, this situation would have turned out in the same way? I think it's a standard diversion program. I don't think race had any factor in it. The police, their primary evidence was the testimony of the two Nigerian brothers in the case. Because that uh, because that testimony had come into question, because there were contradictory statements made by the two Nigerian brothers, mm-hmm. the state felt they could not properly prosecute the case and get a conviction, particularly in that jurisdiction, with the amount of media, uh, media attention on it. Therefore, they entered into a diversion program where Mr. Smollett paid a fine uh, did community service and was able to maintain a clean criminal record, which was then expunged from his case. I've done dozens of these um, in my criminal practice in Atlanta, regardless of race, for first-time offenders, nonviolent felons, as just a diversion program. The city is now saying that he have to pay back all the money, uh, something like $100,000, I believe, for the investigation. So it looked like if he pays the money back, he's um, saying that he's guilty. And if he doesn't, he's going to end up in trouble. What do you think? The city is asking and has made a request. There's no precedent for that. He's not going to end up paying the $130,000 back. This is a mayor in Rahm Emanuel and a police uh, chief and our uh, police superintendent who allowed 3,000 people in the city of Chicago to be shot last year. Almost 300 or hundreds of murders take place there every year. And they decide that this is the bridge they want to die on. This is the one where they're doing press conferences. This one is the one where they're outside uh, doing interviews and everything else because it distracts from the ineptitude of the police department. What the Rahm Emanuel and the police superintendent need to be doing, they're discussing the police officers who killed Laquan McDonald and then subsequently uh, hid and tried to cover it up. And the fact that the officer who murdered Laquan McDonald only got six years in prison for that crime. They talk about the racial ramifications for that. There are way bigger issues in the criminal justice system in Chicago than a celebrity and this uh, uh, and a diversion program. I think that's what they're trying to distract from the bigger issues with this canard. Do you agree that cries of racism are destruction from the uh, black on black murder? Because if they did something about black on black crime in Chicago, the blacks would be crying racism. So I'm, that's why I believe you don't hear a lot about all that. What do you think? There's no such thing as black on black crime, there's just crime. 
Understand that 85% of white people are killed by other white people. Crime is a proximal issue because we still live in a society that which is largely geographically segregated. People kill, rob, beat up other people who live near them who are generally of their same race. So this um, idea of black on black crime is just kind of a, a concept invented in the 80s to prevent law enforcement and politicians from having to address the real issue, which is crime, which is overpopulation, which is the uh, lack of economic opportunity, lack of education achievement, the lack of putting investments in communities to secure them from criminal elements. What? So this, but you might be, you might not be aware, but blacks are more than four times as likely to kill blacks as whites are to kill whites. So it is black or black crime. Um, you use the word uh, uh, black economics situation, right? Blacks are having problem with money. Correct. When will they've been the blacks been crying about that for over 70 years now? At what point will blacks stop acting poor or being poor and showing the world that they are incapable of, of uh, making finance or creating finance for themselves? How long would they use that excuse? Oh, it's not an excuse when it's governmental policy. You say the last 70 years, but going, uh, remember when slavery was over, we still had over 100 years of Jim Crow until the 1960s. Even that, you had redlining, reverse law redlining. We've had uh, issues with ending bank loans all the way up until the mid to late uh, 2000s and all the way till today. So this concept or this idea that somehow black people just don't know how to manage money, don't know how to uh, uh, open businesses. Look at what happened in Black Wall Street, where we did all the things you're saying we should do. And then the but government those came. Are, uh, I got to <laughs> say, Rob. Harlem Renaissance, you can go down the line. You cannot take Robert, out the— Robert, those are, a bunch, those are a bunch of excuses, too. I, I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. And blacks were better off financially, morally, and everything else then than they are today. Most blacks are immoral. They are crying poverty. They are constantly crying racism. They want affirmative action. Now they are crying for reparation. Where is the shame? And why is it that they are not embarrassed about presenting themselves in 2019 as being so poor and black and they need the white man to do something for them, give me— why, why can't they just finally shut up and do for themselves? Well, you know, you can ask the same thing of Israel. Why are we sending them $38 billion a year in support? Why are they crying about racism and anti-Semitism? Why are they crying about the position of uh, themselves in the Middle East vis-a-vis other nations? It's not crying. It's, make, um, it's articulating the issue and the problem that exists uh, in front of them. So when you say they're crying about racism, why aren't you asking why are white people being less racist? But when you uh, talk about crying about the economics, why aren't you saying how do we fix the economics? economic system to create a space where everybody can prosper, not simply the one percent, not simply people of a certain economic group, because truthfully, this. Uh, so are you saying that wrong racial lines is ridiculous? Are you saying that the blacks continue to cry because we support our ally in uh, the Middle East, Israel? And so because we are supporting our friends in Israel, that's why the blacks will keep crying. They still want more stuff and cause somebody else is getting it. Nobody is crying. When you say crying, why are so many of these tea partiers crying when someone else gets a uh, gets something out of the, the governmental pot? Why are these corporations crying when you try to tax them to a point that is equal to other nations? Why are these big uh, billionaires and billionaires crying every time you say that we want to do something economically for the rest of the country? It's not about crying. We live in a representative democracy. I don't know if you— heard. The whole point of the First Amendment is for people to have the right to redress their government for the uh, to address their needs. But I don't know if you first of all, are you pro Israel? I, I, I don't believe that there is a pro and anti Israel faction. What I do know is that the United Nations. Are you pro Israel? But what does that even mean by pro Israel? Do you that, support that, do you support do you support Israel? Well, what do you mean by support Israel? Do you mean do I support the Netanyahu regime, which has recently been indicted for corruption and bribery? Are you saying do I support the killing of innocent Robert, Palestinians? Robert, do you support, you support do you support you Israel? Have to articulate what you mean by support Israel. What are the you are just keep saying the same thing? Articulate a point. 
Let me. So you're not gonna answer that, but let me ask. Are you? Didn't you ask a question to answer. I asked that you support Israel. You you weren't around and what, that. And I asked, but, what do you mean by do you support Israel? What do the words you're saying mean? I thought you were an attorney. You should know what those words mean. Do no, you support? Are you? Support. Are you saying do you support the Zionists? Do you support Netanyahu? Do you support the right of Israel to exist? Do you support their position with the United Nations? Then a, a nuanced question, which you are presenting in a way that does not make sense. Amazing. So let me ask: um, Do you support uh, Palestine? The Palestine? The Palestinians? And what do you mean by that? Do you mean do I support Hamas? Do I support the right to return? Do I Amazing. support the refugees? Do so I that, support the 1947 lines? Do I support the 1964 lines? What You have to ask questions that are tight and concise. Because of time, let me do this. I, I don't know if you're aware or not, most cultures around the world, especially in America, are sick of black people. They're sick of being accused, falsely accused of being racist. They are sick of black people whining and begging and being violent toward other races. Even the Mexicans don't like the blacks. Why don't you people work on getting blacks to change their, uh, their, uh, their attitude, stop being angry, stop being violent, stop begging, rather than keep pushing the begging act? Why not become decent people again? Jesse, I've been to 22 nations around this world. Not one of them says they hate black people. I've been to Japan, Thailand. I've been all over Central America, Mexico. No one hates black yes, people. Yes, they're what fed up with them. Income inequality, the lack of rights between groups. They hate the fact that there are portions of this world that— They, they may not be telling you, but they do hate them. What's your opinion? Who was a better president, uh, Barack Obama or the Great White Hope? What? Who was a better president? Who was the Great White Hope? <laughs> president Trump. I don't think President Trump is the Great White Hope. You I think don't? President Trump is president like any other president. He's done good things. He's done bad things. The same that President Obama was just much like other presidents. He's done good things and bad things. What good thing did the father Messiah Obama do? Oh, well, let's understand he passed a Republican health care bill. He passed Romney Care nationally. Let's understand that he continued the Bush economic policy of Keynesian direct um, injection into the uh, into the economy. He continued the Bush military policy of preemptive war in the Middle East. What was so what good, I know I asked what good thing did he do? Not all the bad things. And what good thing did oh, Obama well, do? Well, hold on. So you, you don't think continuing the Bush strategy in the Middle East was a good thing? Uh, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Do you think do you think passing so, no, Republican asking, health care? Do you no. think passing Republican health care was a good idea? No. Absolutely Do no. You, Are you so, so you you're not like aiming you're not care. able to name anything good that the Father Messiah did. Let me I ask just named six things. I'm sorry? I just named six things. <laughs> so are you for the wall big beautiful wall going up around the borders? Well, I understand it will never happen. So that that's part Are of the issue you run into. Are you for it? Is, it is economically impossible. It is physically impossible. <laughs> There's no way for it to actually work. And President Trump hasn't articulated it. Robert, I don't know if you understand it, and I'm asking you simple questions that you're not answering. Are you well, for you are, 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 are you for are you for the big beautiful wall going up around the borders? Do you have any concept of how to pay for that wall? It's that's, not, to- that's not the answer to my question. Are no, that, you that for— Absolutely. Look, I'm for r- unicorns Robert. and I'm for clouds. If I can't pay for it and make it happen in real life, it doesn't matter, does it? So how is that why you are paying for this wall? Robert, are you for the big, beautiful wall going up around the U.S. and Mexico borders? Uh-huh. How exactly would you pay for it? How would you deal with eminent domain? I mean, How would you deal with farmers' rights? You're definitely a lawyer. Barriers? So let me ask this. Uh, when illegal aliens come into our country, they land in the uh, inner cities for the most part. And, and by moving into the inner cities, they bring drug, crime. Um, they are in, invading the public school system. They are invading the health care system. Uh, they're running black people out of their own communities. They're bringing in gangs that are fighting against other blacks. Does it bother you that illegal aliens are affecting black people in America, first and foremost, in a negative way? 
Well, let's, let's understand first. The, the legal immigration issue well, came to a head after Reagan amnesty. And Why am I, every time I ask you where you've been, you tell me where you're going. Why is that? Well, well, because you have to have an actual conversation around things. We're no, not I'm asking you specific questions Twitter. that you're not yeah, answering. No, no, Do you this care a, that black people are being hurt? First what and foremost. Saying. So let's let's start with Reagan amnesty in 1986. Robert, why I didn't ask president. about Reagan. Ra now, where is Reagan now? Well, Reagan was the president. Who where is Reagan this now? Where is so Reagan like, now? You, you have to talk about the root of the problem. I don't have to. to where problem. is Ronald Reagan now? I assume he's dead in hell. I rest my case. So the question is, do you care that black people are being hurt? First and foremost, by illegal aliens coming into our country. Well, well, you're starting with a faulty premise, which is that illegal aliens are hurting the black community. What you have to understand is that America is a graying nation. The birth rate has dropped over the last century, and we don't have continued immigration. Do you realize you're not answering any questions, Robert? Nation. Well, because you're not asking If you were in a court of a law, if you were in a court of a law, the judge would have you dismissed. Now that you know, I've won over 100 cases in <laughs> court trials. So I guarantee you I've won more cases than you have in court. Uh, I wouldn't put my money on that if I were you. So you're not going to answer that question. You won't answer the question about being pro-Israel or not. Um, what do you think about uh, breast it, the Brexit movement in, uh, and the Jewish movement in this country that blasts or leaving the Democratic Party or plantation the Jews are starting to leave the Democratic plantation. Uh, Blessings uh, movement. What do you think about those issues? Well, I, I do support the idea of African Americans being more diverse in their political thought and in supporting both parties. I think that the Blexit movement, in large part, has just been corporately funded and doesn't have an actual grassroots uh, articulation. There are great black conservatives out here who are doing really good work on the ground. People like Ashley Bell, Bruce Lavelle, uh, Deontay Johnson, Shannon. So, are Moore, you happy that like, they're they leaving? Do, do you think that it's a good thing? Do you think but, it's a what, good thing that these blacks are leaving? The, finally leaving the Democratic plantation? Well, that's the issue. One, it's not a plantation. A plantation is <laughs> where they beat you and they work you. That's, that's what the Democrats the do. <laughs> now, secondarily, on, the, on this point of the Blexit movement, I don't see the actual grassroots support for it. It seems more... No, it's sort of happening. Supported. They'll put 10 or 12 black folks in a room with four or 500 white people and call it a Blexit movement. What I do think Republicans need to do is articulate policies and messages that are uh, that bring more African-Americans into the party. Put people like David Duke no, and, that... some, and Steve King and Stephen Miller out of the Republican Party. I think that if African-Americans have more of a uh, an influence on both parties, you get um, better policy out of it. Do you are you happy that uh, there are Jews who are finally leaving the Democratic plantation? There, one, it's not a plantation. Two, <laughs> this idea that that uh, the Jews are leaving in large numbers, you have to uh, we, they have to deal with their issues similar to the way African Americans are, where you have to have influence in both political parties. You cannot be on one side of the aisle or the other. Um, black folks, Jewish folks, you have no eternal friends, no eternal enemies, just eternal interests. And I think because of that, it is a great thing for people to be involved in both parties, not simply beholden to one or the other. If the Republicans were to offer black people free stuff, I know you admit with this, uh, you agree with me on this. If the Republicans were to offer black people free stuff, like affirmative action, now they want more reparations and all that, there would be more blacks in the Republican Party. Do you agree? Absolutely not, because nobody wants free stuff. Black people That's do. No, no, they don't. This is where you're fundamentally misunderstanding. Well, why they want reparations and affirmative action and Obamacare? Why they literally the word reparations starts at the same root as repayment. It's not. But they stuff. haven't done anything it's for repayment. The work you already did. But we have given so them you can't everything. Say that paying somebody for the work they already did Robert, is free stuff. We Obamacare have given them everything. Free. Republican health care plan. You're, you're starting from fundamentally Robert, flawed, Robert, flawed premises. Robert, we have given black people everything they asked for. They wanted Robert, to. Who is we? They wanted to the integrate the. Remember, they wanted to integrate the schools, the white schools. They wanted. Um, 
They wanted to uh, free welfare, so we gave them welfare. They wanted to move into the white communities, so we said, okay, y'all can move into the white communities. Uh, they wanted to get jobs and go to white schools without earning their way in. And so they came up with this idea of a— uh, Affirmative action. So the black said, the white said, all right, black people, we'll let you in. We'll hold back the whites and others who earned their way so y'all could get in because of your color. And so now we let black people in simply because they're black, not because they're qualified. Now they want more reparations. We don't have any more to get in. Do you feel embarrassed that black people are becoming so-called doctors and lawyers and whatever without earning it? Would you trust that kind of person? One, who is we in this situation when you're saying we gave it to them? The American, uh, we the American people. We the American, so you're saying the black folks aren't part of the we, that they're somehow other. And then secondarily, on this idea that black people don't earn their way into college. They don't. Of- Perfection. Look at this college uh, uh, admission scandal where people are paying tens of millions of dollars to get their you know, children into these schools of their choice. What Not else also- are white people supposed to do? They can't get their kids in by uh, doing it in a natural way where they can earn their way because the blacks are, 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 are whining and begging and talking about racism. Let me in because I'm black, right? So what Nobody else are white people? Because I'm black, it's saying take down What the else barriers. are white people supposed there was to a do? Point in time where people are What armed else are white people supposed armed. to do to get their children there, in? There was a point where armed people had to walk uh, black folks into schools to stop them from being killed in order to go to college. This idea that they are crying and begging to go there is ridiculous. But, Not to mention the fact that right now it's actually the opposite, where white people are trying their hardest to claw their way into HBCUs because of the quality of education there. No, no, that's not true. Um, That was a big mistake, too, back then for black people to force white people to let them in. Why weren't they smart enough to continue to build their own stuff as men, as the white man did? They were doing that prior to the the so-called civil rights movement. Why I I don't, what I don't understand is why aren't blacks, especially the black men, embarrassed that they put themselves beneath the white man. Why are they embarrassed by that? Look, you have to understand the issue of separate but equal was not the separate part. It was the equal part, that that African-American communities uh, almost universally were not getting the same governmental resources that they were paying tax dollars into. No, y'all get That's more. Integration. Y'all get more than what the white people. One quick last who question. Is y'all? <laughs> y'all black folks. Let me ask. And who are you? Uh, Jesse Peterson. Rob, but let me okay. ask you this. I have said over and over again that one of the worst mistakes that was happening in this country was when black people were allowed, when the so-called civil rights movement started. It was a horrible mistake because blacks have never recovered. Do you agree with me? It was a big mistake to have a civil rights movement. I mean, we got black doctors, lawyers. But they're not senior, real doctors, though. Billionaires, presidents. So, no. no they haven't the earned their way, not though. not a bad idea. They only Maybe got it because they're black. The plantation, but I don't. I like having rights. <laughs> I like being able to go to school to vote, to make money, to not be under the foot of, an, uh, of a different group, not to be a second-class Robert, citizen. So, no, Robert, the civil rights movement wasn't a bad idea. Blacks have never recovered. They're still begging and whining. Robert, thank you so much for coming on. I totally appreciate it. All right. All right. All right, folks, I got to take a break back in a moment. Appreciate you, Robert. That was Robert uh, Patello. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.